okay so welcome back to this channel so in our previous videos we have actually added uh, the pagination and search functionality in our library api uh, that we are creating in nest.js if you haven't watched my previous two videos make sure to watch all the two videos and then come back here then it will make more sense so in this video we will implement the error handling in our api so if i go back to my chrome here you can see that i am on the documentation of nest.js so in this video we will use something called pipes so pipe is basically a class that is annotated with injectable decorator okay that implements the uh, pipe transform interface now in simple words pipe is a class that runs before processing the request of the user you can see, see here in the diagram that from the client side if we send the request to this get uh, route okay you can see that before that these pipes will run and make sure that our input is correct okay so basically we use pipes for two things one is for the validation and one is if we want to transform our input into a specific form like we want to convert our integer to string or string to integer and we can do more with that okay so this is called a pipe if i scroll down you can see that a pipe has two uh, use cases one is the transformation and one is the validation so in validation we simply validate our input that the input we are expecting from the user is correct like we are expecting a number the user must enter a number not a string so we will do all that kind of validation with pipes and one is the transformation if we want to transform our input into a specific form like converting string to integer and we can do a lot more with the transformation so these are the two use cases of the pipes so in this video we are not going to create our custom pipe you can also create that but in this video we will use the built-in pipe that is called validation pipe so nest.js provides um, uh, nine pipes out of the box you can see all those here like validation pipe that we will use in this video parse int pipe parse float pipe like if you are expecting a number from the user you can use parse int pipe and parse float pipe for the floating value in this way we have nine different pipes that are provided by nest.js but in this video we will use only validation pipe and if you want more videos on how to create a custom pipe let me know in the comment section so to use that if i take the example of parseint if i have to use the parseint i can simply here is our uh, decorator uh, our uh, controller function that is a that has a get decorator so in the param in the second parameter we can pass here the parseint pipe now it will make sure that the user pass a number in the pipe uh, sorry in the parameters otherwise this pass into pipe will throw the error that your input is not correct okay so in this way we can use our int pipe but in this video we have to use the validation pipe so now let's implement the pipe now there are two ways of implementing the pipe either we can apply the pipes on individual routes like this we can pass our pipes like this on individual routes or individual controller function but also we can use our pipes globally that we want our pipes to be global so that whenever an error occur these pipes will throw the error so we have to use the validation pipe so i will use the validation pipe globally okay so let me show you how it will work if i go back and here in the source i go to the main.ts file now here i can use my pipes globally okay so i simply type here app dot use global pipes okay so in the global pipes you have to pass the pipes that we want to use now you can pass multiple pipes here uh, i will only use validation pipe here so i type here new validation pipe and i have to import the validation pipe from nest.js slash common so i will import that and use that now we can use this validation pipe globally on all routes simply save this one and that is it now we have to validate our inputs and now let me run my project first i type here npm run start dev it will start the project and you can see that we get here an error that class validator package is missing make sure to install uh, this library so we have to install the class validator package in order to make our pipes work okay and also we have to install one more i think so package so here you can see that we have to install the class validator and also we have to use the class transformer that we will use in a minute okay so we have to install both of these packages uh, for the validation so i simply copy it from here and install all two packages i go back and just type here this install both packages okay so packages are installed successfully i restart my server and now let's use that 
Now to use that I simply go back. Now I go to my book and the DTO we have two DTOs create book DTO and update book DTO. Now we have to apply the validation to all these fields. Okay. So how we can do that here we have to use the class validator. Now for example for this field I want that this string must be a string and user must pass it. Okay. So this is a required field. So I will simply type here at is not empty and we have to import this is not empty from the class validator that we have just installed. Okay. So it will make sure that the user must pass the title uh, here in the uh, body. Okay. And also we have to use a second decorator that is is string that this input must be a string. Okay. So let me show you how it will work if I simply save it. And if I go back to my postman and here in the body we have uh, this book. Now if I remove this book from here and click on send you will see that we get here a added message that title must be a string and title should not be empty. So you can see that our validation is working properly. We are getting back our error message and status code is 400. So in this way the validation will work. Now we have to add decorator on all the fields. So I simply copy it from here and description must be a string and should not be empty in the same way we have our author and for the number it should be a number so I use here is number so we have a lot of decorators like is number is email uh, is is phone number okay so we have bunch of decorators that you can check on the documentation as well and now for the category uh, we have to um, use here something called is enum because we know that this is a enum here uh, this one that we have imported from book schema so I have to make sure that this is our correct enum. I copy these both from here, put that here. And now it should not be empty. And then we have to check that at is enum. Okay. And then in the enum, we first of all have to pass the um, entity or the object, which is the enum. So I type here the category. Okay, then I will pass here a second option. I type here message. I type here please enter correct category like this. Now if I type wrong category, it will throw this error. If I simply save it, now let's test it out. If I go back and I just move this E from here, click on send, you can see that we get here an error message that please enter correct category. So in this way, we can add different validations to different fields and that totally depends upon your application. Okay. So now we have added the validation to our create book DTO and now we have to add different validations for the update book DTO. If I go back and open this one, you can see that we have all these fields here, but these all fields are optional. Like if user only want to update this title, then we have to allow that also. So in this case, all the fields are optional. So what we can do is I will simply uh, copy this from here and I put that here. Now I will import this is string from class validator and I use here another decorator that is is optional. So is optional. Okay. So now it will make this field optional in the same way. You have to use these both decorators here, here and here it is, is number. And I use that here and remove it. So I copy this from here. And now we have successfully added the validation to our update book DTO also. Okay. So now these uh, all fields are uh, optional. Simply save it and that is it. I hope that you understand how we can add validations uh, to our API. So now we have added a validation error. There is one more error that I want to handle. That is the uh, mongoose ID error. If I go to the book uh, in the uh, book service and here we have a find by id okay so if i go back to my postman and click on here you can see that we get here a proper error message that book not found if you pass here wrong id but what if we pass here invalid id if i remove some characters from here click on send you can see that we get here internal server error which is a default error by nest.js but this is not actually our internal server error this is a wrong mongoose id error or invalid mongoose id error if i go back you can see that here we get a message here 
uh, cast to object id failed for this so this is error for the invalid momos id how we can validate the so we have to also validate our uh, id so how we can do that i will simply call here first of all const is valid id i use here mongoose dot is valid object id and pass in here the id now this function will throw true or false if it is a correct id it will throw true and if it is an invalid id then it will return uh, false so you have to check that if a not is valid id then we will simply throw here bad request exception and pass here an error message that is please enter correct id and now if i go back and click on send you will see that we get here a proper error message that please enter correct uh, correct id and this status code is 400 so in this way we can also handle these type of errors i hope that you understand and one more thing that nest.js work made our work a lot easier if you haven't handled any error by default nest.js will throw a proper error message if i go back to my chrome and if i go to here in the uh, exception filters you can see that here a nest comes with the uh, built-in exception layer which is responsible for processing all unhandled exceptions so if there are any unhandled exceptions in your application nest.js will throw a default error message uh, to the user it will not uh, basically crash your application you can see that it will throw this uh, type of message that internal server error with 500 status code okay so if you have any unhandled exception nest.js will take care of that as well Okay, so in this way, we can handle our different type of errors in our Nest.js. I hope that you understand. If you have any question, post your question in the comment section. I will definitely reply there. And if you want to check out my Udemy course on Nest.js, which is an in-depth course, you can also check that. I will add the link of that course in the description of this video. And now in my next video, um, I will add the authentication to our API. Okay, so make sure to subscribe to this channel because a lot of content is coming. So I will see you in the next video.